Well, it's a special type of person who wants to wake up and get kicked in the dick every day to build a business. <laughs> oh, but but you're so rich because you own your own business. And oh my God, you show up at a house and it's $90. Oh, I wish I had that job. Motherfucker, you want to see the bills it took me to get here? Yeah. yeah. I'm going broke at $90. Welcome to the Spinoso Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Spinoso. My experience and expertise is in scaling all types of medical businesses to seven, eight, and nine figures. And I'm sharing my journey to having multiple eight-figure companies and someday, hopefully, enjoying a nine-figure exit. This isn't a podcast telling you you should do this. I'm just telling you how I did this, and I hope that helps you. I want to help you build your business, take ownership of your life, and become a better leader at home, and at work. And guys, I'd love to connect with you, especially if you're a medical entrepreneur. I have free courses available to help you scale your medical business. Check those out at dralexspinoso.com slash courses. That is D-R-A-L-E-X-S-P-I-N-O-S-O dot com slash courses. I also invite you to connect with me on Instagram at dralexspinoso, LinkedIn at the same and every other platform, YouTube, et cetera. I am always Dr. Alex Spinoso. Thanks for listening. Well, for those that uh, do not know, this is my dad, Steven Spinoso. How old are you now? 60? Yeah, you just turned 60. I, I just had my 60th birthday. Happy right. birthday. Well, it oh, was you're like a couple a months later. Like, oh, yeah. happy belated yeah. birthday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like a year, like a year July. ago. He's yeah. almost, oh, almost, that's 61. Right. almost 61. He's almost 61. The car. The yeah. car. Yeah. yeah, the car story. Yes, I knew that. Mm-hmm. I yeah. didn't know that. Well, happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. And my dad has been an entrepreneur since I was, before I was born. And... I learned a lot about my things that I should do during my business and growing my business and everything like that from him. And so decided to have him on the show because he is the most politically incorrect person on the planet, which is good. So maybe we might get into a ton of trouble, but we'll probably have some great <laughs> followers after this. These no, it's going to be a whole lot of bleeping out, I think. No, they don't bleep shit. And, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can just you speak however you want. I don't really care. Oh, shit. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. shit. <laughs> he just opened up a can of fucking worms. Yeah. <laughs> can of worms. Um, but you know Amanda. You've met Amanda before. I've never right? seen that bitch before in my life. Yeah, never. No, right? <laughs> it's the first time. <laughs> the fuck are you? Uh, but you know, welcome. Welcome. We're going to ask some random questions. Actually, Vaughn, who's a, a writer on my show, he, he um, has That's a guy in the Philippines. No, no, no. That's me. <laughs> that's me. Vaughn's a white dude. He he works here in the U.S. <laughs> uh, he's a writer on on my show and helps me out with uh, with some writing and s- Amanda out with some writing and stuff like that. So he he actually has some good questions that I don't think I've ever really asked before. So we're gonna try oh, and Christ. like unpack them. They should be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know. There's just shit I, do, I just don't know about. <laughs> yeah. No, for, no. It won't be bad. We won't, we won't get crazy into it. Um. Okay. So one of the one of the main things with social media in general and you've seen it even with me with social media and all this stuff where like i one i fucking hate this like i hate it but i've forced myself to become an extrovert and do this stuff because all the gurus out there it's it's the nowadays if you don't say something there people are just going to follow some other fucking dipshit so you might as well say they're going to put words in your mouth that you never said anyway yeah absolutely so you might as well say something so in the current entrepreneur personal development state space we have all these gurus and these are guys that are like yelling from stage about how you should get your fucking life together when their life is falling apart or they're teaching marriage classes and it's they're like their fourth marriage and <laughs> i figure if you do that many by then you ought to have a fucking perfected <laughs> you keep, if you keep one of them around right God damn. <laughs> so when you were tell tell me about starting fix it right like how is that and who were like the the gurus that if there were any back then that you listened to or, or I listened followed to or- shit. I came up with my own plan. Fix it right was necessity. Uh, we were military and making a whopping $12,000 a year. Try living on that shit with a uh, family, a uh, kid and a wife. And so there were days that uh, we didn't eat. So we tried how we delivered your mom and I delivered newspapers at four o'clock in the fucking morning in the, in the, uh, in the apartments that we lived in. Um, I did just about anything. Now, going back, uh, I taught myself how to work on machines. I've always been mechanical. I love working on 
on anything. I can work on just about rebuild just about anything from cars to radios, whatever. So when I was going in high school, um, my dad split when I was 16. So I moved in with my grandparents uh, from my junior and senior year. And then uh, I figured I had to help out because I didn't feel they owed, uh, they had to support me. It was bad enough that they were giving me room and board. So long story short, taught myself to work on machines to uh, help them out. I fixed everything in their apartment house, got jobs. I worked a full-time job while I was going to high school, worked two full-time jobs while I was going to college, got married, joined the military so I could get married. We, uh, like I said, we were in the military, wasn't making shit, so decided we had to do something. So always been good at machines, decided, hey, let's do that. I started working on machines for other people, started running service calls on the side, uh, kept my mouth shut because we was deployed a lot. And the minute they found out you had anything going on the side, they'd deploy your ass. Mm. But got deployed mm. anyway. I missed the first three years of your life. Mm-hmm. And anyway, that was, a, that was the other reason, quite honestly, why I started my own business. Because after missing you and not seeing you grow up for the first three years, I'm like, I'm not doing that shit ever again. So I worked for the biggest asshole I know. I worked for myself. And um, it grew from there. And the purpose of my business was never money. It was time. It was just to give me enough money to make sure that we didn't, we, that you weren't lacking of anything and that I had the time to never miss anything. That was it. Wow. That's really impactful. So there's, there's no, okay. So, Going back, there's no YouTube. No, nope. this is you started this. There's no internet. Did you start this before I was born, or did you start this after I was born? Before you were born. So there's no there's no internet. How do you how do you start working on these? Like, what do you do to start working on these machines? What do you how do you figure it out? You just fuck up a lot of people's fucking machines. No. <laughs> how well, did, how the, that work? actually, the biggest the biggest thing that I learned quickly was that I went into I was working for a used appliance company and i would rebuild their machines so we had literally hundreds of machines in a, in a lot and you just start tearing them down and once i could once i tore a machine down i knew how it worked what it worked and and how to fix them so tearing each one down and rebuilding them basically is where i got my my knowledge on washers and dryers and and really in refrigerators the same thing but Refrigerators are, you know, you translate that into an air conditioner or just about anything um, because they're all the same components, just larger or smaller. Some work a little bit differently, but not very much. And again, I've always been able to visualize spatially. uh, And you can do the same thing where you can grab a machine or grab whatever you're looking at and look at it in your mind from different angles and turn it. Most people can't. Mm -hmm. And then I also... A lot of um, a lot of people that repair that are technicians. I, I'm not. Re- they're not repair people. Technicians where they can go in and look at a machine and know what the problem is just by looking at the machine and listening to it, hearing. Yeah, you you listen to the customer, then you tell them to shut up and get the hell out of the room because I'm tired of listening to you. <laughs> uh, but really, just listen to the machine, know what their problems were. You can pretty much figure it out. The new electronic ones are a real pain in the ass, but other than they just take time mm-hmm. because you have to sit there and wait where the other ones, you can force it into doing whatever you want it to do. So Did that answer your question. Yeah. You're doing this. So you're doing this on the side mm-hmm. to, to make the extra money. <clears throat> when did it turn into like fix it right? Or when were you like, this needs to become a business? Cause you started before and then you get deployed. Every time it would it would just stop. I'd be deployed. Okay. So then, how many times did you get deployed? As like like we were gone. Like building. I was deployed two hundred and seventy eight days a year. Fuck me. Two hundred and seventy nine. They would have to give us orders. Now it wasn't all one deployment. Every time you'd come in station, you'd maybe home for a couple of days or a week or two, and then just for the listeners, really quick, what did you what did you do? What was your long range radar for the Air Force? Okay, so go back. 
So we didn't have any job in station. So when we were in station, they would release us. What's in station mean? Uh, when we were in the uh, on our base that we were normally stationed at, mm. which would be McClellan Air Force Base in, okay. in Sacramento. Yeah. When we got in station, they would we'd have to show up in the morning at seven, but we'd be released by eight because we had nothing to do there. And then so a lot of the guys go home, drink beer, watch TV. I went to work. Okay. And I because you're still getting paid, like even we're if you're still get, getting like, paid, yeah, thing. we're still, still getting, getting paid, paid from the Air Force, but from the Air again, Force, but 12 grand a year, we weren't getting paid much. We weren't getting paid much of anything, living rich. Uh, and a lot of the guys really, their whole idea was they loved to go be deployed because they we got per diem, uh, extra pay, hmm. and that's how they would supplement their income, okay. Uh, but most of the time, they would just, like I said, we they'd have free time from the whole day. And we wouldn't have to go back unless there was a recall. So we would, for me, I would go to work. And I'd either do service calls if I booked anything from, I had I advertised in the in the newspaper at the time. Okay. Because again, and was it fix it, no right? Internet. No. Okay. No, it was just, we repair machines. Uh, actually, fix it, right, was a story. Your mom went down um, with your sister. I don't know if Jenna was alive yet. Uh, but your mom was down in Florida and I said, we need a name for the company. I didn't want to be Steve's mechanical. I thought that was fucking stupid. Uh -huh. So, uh, her aunt came up with fix it right. R I G H T. Right. And I liked it, but I changed it to R I T E exclamation point. Okay. And that's how fix it right was born. Why R I T E exclamation point? Because I want to be different. I've never been the mainstream. Okay, I didn't want to just again. <laughs> didn't want to no be Steve McCann. Well, I, I, <laughs> honestly, if you think about it, it pisses a lot of people off. That's true. Uh -huh. It annoys me. It annoys the shit out of, especially teachers. Yeah, and I, I, <laughs> teachers. I remember one saying "right" spelled wrong, and I go, "Yeah, but it." The whole idea was, "Why'd you call me?" Well, I saw your ad, and what made you call me? Well, fix it right. Well, then it made you fucking work. Fucking did it. <laughs> yeah, <you>? fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> but you're teaching people wrong. Well, then they, if they I'm learn not teaching this, and they learn that from me, they've got issues. I'm not, fucking, yeah, I'm not a fucking teacher. I'm here to fix your shit. It's not my job. No, that's the problem. A lot of them aren't teachers either. Yeah, <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> so, okay, so you're doing this on the side. Mm -hmm. You get deployed 278 days a eight year. Eight days a year. What were your, where were your, you know, deployments while I was growing up? And how did you, <laughs> any you place figure out fucking cold because I pissed a lot of people off? Okay. With what? Just your, my in, mouth. your inability to, my yeah, mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, a, it's a family <laughs> trait. Yeah, thank you. I, one, one I remember specifically, um, I had a butter bar. It's a second lieutenant walk up to me and he was talking to me like I was an idiot. And I says, you know, I says, I'm guessing you were poli sci, uh, political science. We uh -huh. used to make fun of them. I was in the engineering program. Uh -huh. And uh, so I said, I bet you're poli sci. I said, why don't you do this? Why don't you go back? I said, I'm thinking business math was probably the highest you ever got. I said, why don't you go back to school, take your chemistry, your physics courses, and your, phys and, you know, and your math courses, come back, and then we can have an intelligent conversation. Until then, we're not on the same level. And I walked away. I got deployed to, <laughs> where was I going at that point? I went to, oh, Greenland. <laughs> yeah. Spent six months totally Greenland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is only ice. Mm -hmm. Which is all fucking which ice. Which is all ice. And as a matter of fact, that was their incentive to get me to stay on. When I was leaving, we had been working for years when we were in station on a, on a radar program for Iceland. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, if you re-up, or at least extend for a year, you can go to Iceland. I go, well, that's not a fucking, that's not, that's not exactly what I'm looking forward to, so no. Yeah, yeah. You chose the wrong fucking day. <laughs> you know, send me, to, send me to, you know, Hawaii for a year? Okay, I'll go. Yeah, <laughs> I'll stay in. Yeah. yeah, I mean, wow. What a, I'm, I'm like so locked in on this. What an interesting dynamic, because I, I, you know, know Alex well, and hearing him He's say, also an asshole. <laughs> That's not where do you think you learned from? Uh, <laughs> learn from the best. <laughs> but but hearing the love and desire to be with his children 
and then hearing what you went through and how you had to be away and, and well, did he ever tell you my you? parenting advice when he was younger about having kids? No, I, I don't think so. I don't know. I haven't I gotten remember. parenting you don't advice remember that? from Alex. Mm-hmm. So I told I probably him, do, but I'm not I told sure exactly him that uh, if he didn't put in the same amount of time with his kids as I put in with mine, that I would put a bullet through his head. That was it. Mm-hmm. I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I maybe heard you say that before. <laughs> I maybe did hear that no. one. Yeah. Money so, comes and goes. Homes come and go. Businesses come and go. His legacy is those three or four now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is. I mean, that's what you that's what you live for. Yeah. That's so what it, I live for. I look at him. I look at his sister. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my wife and I are most proud of them. Not mm-hmm. the fuck fix it. Right. Fuck the house. Fuck the cars. None of that matters. It's when we come down here and we see him, we see the love with the kids. We see him step out of his office and come out and and play with them, Mm -hmm. you know, instead of being in here or going elsewhere. You know, that's very easy for him to do. Mm -hmm. It's harder for him to try to work here with them banging on the glass and licking the glass, (laughs) the little glass lickers, you know, (laughs) (laughs) fucking hell. But Bella loves to lick glass. Yeah. (laughs) She's licking the floors now, for Christ's sake. <laughs> She's got oh, no. issues. She's, fucking, I actually saw she's learning from the dogs. I actually saw a, a, a picture of a like a front doormat that said, please take your shoes off. The children lick Stephanie the floors. Stephanie posted yeah. it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I've seen that. Yeah, I've Stephanie posted that. it and said, my uh, Jabelle actually licks the floors now. Bella licks everything. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. But no, that's, I mean... It's so easy to get caught up in your own lives and that your own mm-hmm. self-importance and oh, I'm I run multi multi-level businesses. Uh, <laughs> in <laughs> no five idea. years, no I, idea who the he's last talking one, about. The right last now. one was like, how amazing. I, I five years ago, I was a doctor and and now I run. And I have people coming to me and asking advice, and <laughs> but he still turns around and loans his car to. A, a friend who wants to use it for a wedding and mm-hmm. comes out and, and looks at his, you know, looks at his kids and plays with them and snuggles mm-hmm. them. And you can see them, they, the, the joy and they, they run to him. They don't shy away from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But on the other hand, he also corrects them and yells at them and tells them and, pats, you know, and hits them. You know, you got, you pats them on the ass, whatever you want to call it, spanking, you know, yeah, there's no gentle parenting in this fucking house. It's like <laughs> Steph tried that. <laughs> like, oh my god, she's Stephanie, like, gonna... she was. We're going to just talk it out. Oh, good luck with that one. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's she's talking all right at a very loud, <laughs> like, very loudly at them talking. Well, I remember what was it? Just recently, pull that mic a little bit closer to you. Just recently, she patted them on the butt. Uh, Geo, I think it was. Yeah, it was like holy shit. Uh, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know when mom does it, it's serious. <laughs> yeah. when no, it when, there, when Stephanie finally breaks down and does uh-huh. it, it's like, oh, it's an epiphany. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like they're out here biting each other and shit. It's just like a fucking animal house. <laughs> yeah, but for so you got you got to give Bella a chance. You know, Bella. Everybody else is much she's bigger. She's the most vicious. We took her to the doctor, and the doctor's like, she's got spunk. I'm like, she will eat your. Yeah, but she has to. (laughs) She's fighting back the boys. So when when I was watching them early on, she would jump on them like a spider monkey and bite the shit. I'd leave her for about, well, maybe 20, 30 seconds, let her bite the shit out of them, and then pull them apart. She grabbed Uh grabbed Leo by both ears once and (laughs) pulled his face to hers so she could bite his face. (laughs) Oh, Oh, my God. It's like, like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Uh, They're amazing. They are amazing. But anyway, we we digress. So when you went, you went back and forth between being gone and then running your business. How was that? Like you were, you were marketing in the paper. Mm -hmm. So were those ads just running? And so when you came back, you would just pick back up with whoever was calling you? So the the phones would, it actually rang to our house. Our, Mm -hmm. our main number is our old house number. Which is the 363-916-363-4363. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Sacramento area. Sacramento area. Sacramento, Sacramento, Sacramento case, Stockton. Shout out. We're running All this as three a, of you that are listening to this right now. We'll run this out on that <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nobody listening in Sacramento. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe. No, but yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. so Natalie would, would answer the phones or whatever and tell him he's been deployed. And, mm-hmm. and most people understood when we were military. But yeah. honestly, back then, military was not what it is now. It's It wasn't... It was a stigma. It was the negative, you know, we're depending on where we were deployed. Mm. We were in Mississippi and you couldn't go off base without a group. Yeah, we did anyway, but. Because people would uh, just fight you or what? Oh, yeah. They they did not. The locals didn't like the military, even though really? without them, that base, without the base there, they would have nothing. Was that just just uh, like government boy thing or or what what was that from was that what was in the i news? think it was a local was boy hating the military or? hating hating us coming in and and i don't know stealing their women yeah i don't know <laughs> right <laughs> Did our jobs <laughs> without us you have no job yeah. right <laughs> But uh, so back then, yeah, but it was always, I mean, just look at the country. The country hated the military as a whole. It was still mm-hmm. coming off of, I mean, it was years later, but still coming off of Vietnam. They, they, mm-hmm. That really hadn't changed. Mm. Uh, yeah, we weren't baby killers, but we were military, and it was just a whole different story. Yeah. Nowadays, shit, I get free lunch at fucking Applebee's or whatever. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Didn't get yeah, that yeah. shit back then. <laughs> That's awesome. Discounts so- at Home Depot. So along the way, you know, you, you, you really started your business because you had this desire to be with your son and children and not be away. So that was just because you knew how to fix things. But what about along the way? So as far as growing it, you know, now that the kids are gone and you have more time, I'm assuming, um, what, what do you do to keep yourself like growing and and that's just it i uh, you know we we somewhat grow we we're it's still just a tool for me it is time to be with my wife time for us to spend together now she's riding with us and because she got tired of being alone but it's it is for me i love fixing things i love machines um I've always told people, machines and pets, both mm-hmm. very much the same. They don't fuck with you. You fuck with them, they'll bite you. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not fake. They'll never stab you in the back. They'll let you know it's coming right up front. You know, and, and that for me, I mean, the joy of working on anything, whether it's at my home, whether it's a car, um, whether it's just a well or a washing machine, tearing it down, being able to... Play, replace the parts that need to be replaced and bring it back up and, and have it work perfect. And it's, for me, that's a blast. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, that old Adam or the old idiom that I, I told Alex back in the day was, you know, forget about that. You know, what is it? Do what you love and never work a day in your life. Oh, fuck that. You, you're working no matter what you, you're still working. Mm-hmm. And then do what you love on the side. Well, for me, I was able to incorporate the two of them because I do love that on the side. I finally have the shop of my dreams and I'm working on I'm working on vehicles there and and my tractors and everything else and I have my lifts and everything is right there and it and it's a joy. So, yeah, I work all day on machines. I come home and what do I do? I work on machines. <laughs> you know, and and what do I do on a Saturday? Work on machines. What do I do mm-hmm. on a Sunday? You know, I take my wife out, get her nails did or whatever and say, "Okay, I'm going to go in I'm going to the shop. You coming or not?" And her ass better drag along with me if she wants to see me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to put a couch in there and a TV and everything else. So football season, she can watch her football team and I can still play. What's her favorite football team? Oh, the Dolphins. Oh, they did well, though, this past two years. So the Dolphins, she, we cried a lot for a lot of years. <laughs> and what? For the first 20, I just went outside and cut the grass or whatever during her football games. Mm-hmm. And then finally she talked me into coming in and watching. So I actually enjoy the the game in watching is very much like soccer. Uh, I watch the strategies and watch the the plays build. I wish they wouldn't stop every fucking thirty seconds, but whatever. Um, but uh, no, I enjoy I enjoy watching that with her. And but as far as build, growing the business, you know, Alex keeps pushing me to to grow the business and 
and oh, you can be, you could be a multi-million dollar business, but again, I'm not about the money. It's for me, it's, it's nice, but, uh, we make enough that we're very comfortable and we can buy what we want when we want. We've, we've scrimped and saved and put shit away and, and, um, you know, I'm where I'm at. You know, the house is there. I'm not selling it. I don't ever plan on selling it. I'm not going to reverse mortgage that shit. You know, so it'll be there. They can Airbnb it or whatever. They're just not allowed to sell it. Or I'll give it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I won't eat it. Yeah, I'll keep it probably for sure forever. Well, again, you just Airbnb that shit, make money on it. I don't give a shit. Right. Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Do Pet Cemetery. I got a couple yeah, of them in the I'll back. Just fill the whole. <laughs> Fill the whole yard with pet cemetery. No, they're in the they're in the orchard. We'll rezone it, rezone it as a cemetery. <laughs> Have all the neighbors buried there. Just the ones I don't like. Yeah, I'm gonna stuff you and put you in the front yard though, at the front gate of the cemetery. That works. <laughs> Plant a tree. That works. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. actually heard that that's a thing. Sean has started uh, a garden in our backyard, and um, it's really kind of fun to see the process. Yeah. Um, but. I'm trying to figure out how you're going to connect. This. I've like, actually it, heard. Is it just the, the people he's killed? Well, like, not the people. A plan for every person or I've animals? Actually, he, he read, so he was telling me that they, in some countries, mm -hmm. do plant or bury people or animals And or plant whatever, the tree above them. And plant yeah, the they're tree great above. fertilizer. And yeah, yeah, it's actually yeah, like good fertilizer. a real thing. So, yeah. you know, no, if you've got a, real a really thing, good sure. tree like in the country, backyard and your dad's gone, I'm going to be questioning. Yeah, you're not oh, no, I used to threaten <laughs> I used to threaten all Gianna's boyfriends, my daughter's boyfriends. It's like you could pick a fucking tree if you hurt her. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of trees back there. <laughs> we just, just pick, a, pick a fruit tree and that'll be above you. Yeah, what do you want to taste like after you're dead? <laughs> Although I do, I do tell my mother-in-law that I'm not burying her under a cherry tree because she'll make them all fucking sour. Yeah, oh. she'll, she'll destroy the entire field. <laughs> so this is going to be a loaded question, actually, because I think I know oh, where great. you're going to go with this one. No. So there's always been morons in business and life. So and most recently, we see even more morons. So in your in your uh, history of doing business, and that's that's a long history. What are some of the like the dumbest people that you fucking come across? Homeowners can be great. <laughs> homeowners, so home, homeowners specifically clients, right? So client, yeah. we we'll just say clients in general. Yeah. Why, why clients? Why clients? Because well, especially now with the advent of fucking YouTube, mm. everybody's an expert. Everybody wants to diagnose their job before I even get there. And my usual response is, well, if you fucking know so much, you fucking fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Which pretty much ends the call. Yeah. Um, I just had a call. I this one just drives me batty. So a guy calls me up and he lives downtown Sacramento. Now, downtown Sacramento is called East Sac. These are the old, old homes. They have basements. So his water heater's down in his basement. So he calls me up and he says, I need you, it's a Saturday. I need you to come by and light my water heater. Okay, so the fucker doesn't even know how to light his water heater. Okay, so we're we're starting with a real brain child right off the bat. And, he tells, and I said, well, what's going on? He goes, well, it was submerged. I said, okay. We had a lot of rain. His sump pump stopped. Mm -hmm. And it went under. I said, I can't fix it. I can't relight it. Got to replace it. What are you talking about? I said, well, once it's underwater, you can't relight it because the components will rust eventually inside the valve or whatever. Or it could rust, causing it to jam open. Now you've got a bomb under your house. Mm -hmm. So there's no fucking way I could relight it. All manufacturers say it's got to be replaced. Well, how much? I said, well, with all the code upgrades and everything else, about three to four thousand dollars. Well, how the fuck could it be four thousand dollars? The, the water heater is only a thousand. And I'm thinking to myself, motherfucker, you can't light a water heater pilot light, and you're gonna tell me how much to charge for a fucking water heater? <laughs> Guess what? Now it's five grand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you get that shit all the time. People just, oh, I, I can buy that part on eBay. Well, knock yourself out. Yeah. You put it in. Mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. Or I bought the parts already. I just want you to put them in. Nope, sorry. My liability is not going to cover yeah. shit that you bought. Yeah. Not only that, but part of our income is I make a markup. If you don't yeah. want to make a markup, then you fucking do it. But you mark shit up because you've been doing it for 40 years. Not no, because... everybody fucking marks shit up. That's well, how yeah, we make everybody. money. You well, gotta, yeah, you're going to warranty the shit going in. Yeah. Yeah, you're not paying cost of goods on everything. This isn't a fucking charity. You're running a business. This is a business. And there's less and less people in the trades now because people didn't want to go to school. 
for trades well, because simple, they wanted to go to school. A simple analogy, a fucking pair of sneakers. What do you pay for a fair, fair of fucking sneakers you put up on your goddamn little channel there? Oh, nowadays, a few thousand bucks. And how much were those motherfuckers to be made? Oh, God. In China? 20. Or where I get them from? <laughs> no, less than 20. They're probably a few dollars. A few dollars. Yeah. So what's the markup on that? Yeah. No. Are you bitching? No, not at I all. I know you don't bitch about cut people coming out to work, but okay, let's 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 dumb it down. Let's go to a normal pair of sneakers, one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and they're costing three dollars to make. Mm -hmm. You don't see some motherfucker sewing them on the goddamn uh, sewing them at home. <laughs> Fucking one hundred percent. But they can do my job. One hundred percent. And people, the people don't realize mm. that when they're when they're clients, it's the same thing. Good you point. can buy Botox online, or you know, you can't buy pres well, you can buy prescriptions online. Actually, peptide sciences and, and shit like that. But you're gonna hurt yourself. I mean. Mm -hmm. There's got to, there's some sort of. Same with a machine. You're going to hurt quality. yourself yeah. or hurt somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's, you know, you're going to have to deal with dumb clients no matter what. Yeah, but the problem is they've become more prevalent with mm -hmm. the internet. Yeah. It, the stupidity so you, you is just. So how do you combat that? I tell them fix it to fucking selves. <laughs> <laughs> When they tell you, when they tell you they won't, because it's essentially the same exactly. thing that we do in our business. You know, we, you know, we're the experts. We can do it if you don't want, you know, that type of treatment. Go find another place, and you know, they they ask enough people, they're gonna find somebody to do it. But again, then oh, it's I tell be broken, everybody. It's but be my broken. main thing, what I'll tell people is, look, you can always find somebody cheaper. Mm -hmm. You can always find somebody more expensive. We're not the most expensive. We're not the cheapest. We're middle of the road, but we are the fucking best. Mm -hmm. We Thank know you. what the hell we're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if you want it fixed right, it's in the goddamn name. If you don't, call somebody else. I'm really easy to get along with. We sell, we sell shit and I'll get a call and, you know, my kids are, especially older people, my kids are yelling at me saying I shouldn't have spent the money. I said, well, first of all, is it their money? No. Then what the hell are you worried about? But kids are afraid that their parents mm -hmm. are spending their inheritance. So I always tell them, fine, I'll send you your check back. I don't give a shit. I won't sell it to you. I don't care. It doesn't bother me in the least. Yeah, but you might want to consider giving your money to somebody else than your kids, because <laughs> if they're that, it's if so they're, true. If they're that so fucking worried about That's what you so do with your true. money that yeah. you've earned, yeah, there's a problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had this conversation actually going to that, and we're going off a tangent, but I don't really give a fuck. We've had this conversation where I've told you you need to make sure that you no, spend see this every. Dollar. I just say stress, scratch the shit out of back of my head. Why are you stressed out? I'm always stressed it's a out. Podcast? No, not you. <laughs> Just all the other shit I got to worry about. <laughs> but, um, and that's entrepreneurism in general, or life in general. You're they must have like out. no hair just back here. Stop oh, you work for yourself, don't you? You got no fucking hair back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but we've had that conversation before where I've told you, like, you just make sure you spend everything and make sure you enjoy it as much as you can mm -hmm. before you go. Because I did you not like, remember what I told you before you were rich? No. I told you I was going to leave you with a $1 bill. And I don't mean a dollar. <laughs> I mean a bill for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody was going to come collect. I got to co-pay I wasn't leaving you shit. My, my burial is paid for. You are going to wipe my ass, though, if I can't. I, Fuck sticking no, me in no, a no, home. No, no, no. I'm oh, hiring, yeah. No, I'm not doing it. I'm hiring somebody. That's with fine, but I'll be huge, in the house with you, I'm bitch. I'm hiring some, some <laughs> girl with a tiny outfit and huge titties. That like works rest. for me. Because I know you like that. <laughs> Absolutely, and a, and a nice ass. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'll just keep throwing shit on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, be <laughs> <Pretty> good. <laughs> but no, we've had that conversation, and people think, especially like, oh, you have to. It, again, the the whole spending the inheritance and inheritance thing and stuff. If you guys are waiting for that. Fucking kill yourself. Mm -hmm. No, fuck that. No, <laughs> I plan on. I worked for it. I plan on enjoy. I got your ass through yeah. college. Right. I got your ass where you want to be. My job was done. Should have been done when you were eighteen, but we were stupid and we just couldn't do that. And I don't understand parents that can. But we got you where you need to be. We got you with the tools that you took from there and 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 ran with them. Obviously, because I didn't teach you any of this shit. Yeah, but gave you the base from where you could launch from solidly. Mm -hmm. And that's all I need to fucking do. The rest of the shit's mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. That's like your your entire obligation is to make sure that you give I will leave you the cards though because I won't it, sell it, those it's bitches. It's like being an employee as well. Like you have to make sure that you give your employees the ability to succeed to grow if they want to grow the business beyond where you are now or else Oh, absolutely. You just can't. And make sure look Make sure they're heard and you do that. 
And I think that's what you, I think you did get part. that from from your mom and I is that you you make sure, you know, my thing is, you know, look, if there's an issue, deal with it now. Don't let it fester. You know, and and where all of a sudden now it's this big fucking problem. No, deal with it now. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. Hey, if I fucked up, if I called you a jackass and, and, and it bothered you, well, then call me a jackass back. But don't let that shit build up to where all of a sudden now it's a big goddamn problem. Mm. Oh, yeah. And people don't do that. No, they don't know how to speak anymore, their mind. They, they're all afraid. Yeah. They're all. They're so terrified. That, oh, or they're, they're going to hurt your feelings. Oh, my God. Okay. So I just, the guy on, online, you know, me and cars. Mm-hmm. So he's got a Hummer up. So I messaged him. How I, all they sent was pictures of it. it's a dealership. I said, send me the odometer and a price. Give me your phone number so we can discuss this. No, fuck you. Well, I didn't say fuck you. <laughs> I said no. Not interested in getting a phone call from him. And my, I'll tell you exactly what I said. Not interested in getting a phone call. Send me the odometer. Give me the price or piss off. And I typed it. Well, his response was, "Well, why are you using profanity?" I said, well, one, I, I was going to start with I was a Jersey Italian, but I didn't. I just said, one, I already told you I didn't want, didn't want to deal with that. Two, piss off is not a profane, is not a profane <laughs> word. And if, and if you feel that that's profane, we probably, you probably should find someone else <laughs> to respond well. to me because yeah. this is not going to go well. It's about to go real bad. <laughs> So the next thing was, well, let me have your number so I can have someone else call you. No. what I said, look up three lines and, and refer back to that message again. Yeah. Well, how are they supposed to contact you? The same way you are. Yeah, messenger. <laughs> I fucking messaged you about it. <laughs> Haven't heard back from him. That's ridiculous. But it was That's- so funny. Why are you using profanity? Piss off? Seriously? Yeah. I was going to tell you to go fuck yourself, but I decided piss <laughs> off was a little nicer. <laughs> That's one of the biggest things in, in, uh, in business that actually we just talked about in our corporate event last week is that when people reach out to you, the most important part, one of the most important things of responding to a client is meeting them or responding in the way that they messaged you. Not like the, yes. the, the way or whatever, but if somebody messages you on Messenger, you fucking respond in messenger. You don't try and call them on the phone. If someone calls you, then you call them. If someone texts you, then you text them. If someone emails you, then you email them because they like that. That may be like the only and way, I understand but that person's your there. Point, but if there are a 17-year-old girl trapped in a 43-year-old man's body and all he wants to do is message you all day. Yeah, well, that's true too. Just fucking call me. Yeah. I can finish this whole conversation in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. There's a point Instead of, of being texting me all fucking. I'm talking about specifically day. on sales, though. Oh, yeah. How about Yelp? Sales. Like, I got so goddamn tired no, we don't of do Yelp. Fu- I know, but back in the day, yeah. Yelp yeah, was a yeah. thing and everybody would text all day. You want me to fix it or not? I don't care how many fucking times you move this thing. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. So well, you while brought- you're correct, it's just annoying. Just call me. <laughs> and then you don't hear different inflections in my in my writing that aren't there. Um, which is a Or they are nowadays. there and you're just not catching them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge thing. Well, you brought up the old days of Yelp, which kind of brings me to the next thought here is, you know, people like to glamorize the good old days. So what's your take on like the good old days, the good and bad of the old days? Versus today. Versus today. What's your what's your walk? Okay, so let's go Snow good shoes to people hired experts to do a job. The experts did the fucking job to the best of their ability. They may not have been great. But they did it to their best of, of their abilities, and they took pride in their work. You find me 10 people that take pride in their work Today. nowadays. Mm-hmm. We do. We take my wife's BMW to a body shop. It has a spot of, and I'm going to fast forward, because we called them, we called the body shop three times a charm, because I had to go three times before I'd pick up a fucking car. Mm. And they were good. I found a p- spot of pink and blue in a white car's bumper. And their response was, well, it's not going to be perfect. Excuse me, it's pink and fucking blue in a white fucking car. What part of this is even close? But that's nowadays people are okay with halfway. 
okay with half ass and that and they're fine not only doing it performing it in their jobs but accepting it from people that are doing work for them would you half ass a botox nope that's just yeah that's a quality thing i understand but it's your i'm sure there are people out there doing it oh Mm -hmm. there's tons of people doing Mm -hmm. it that's why that's why when people say you know yes business is super fucking hard I get it. And building a business is super hard and all the stress you got to go through as well. But it's also super easy because if you provide a quality service and you just put everything fucking into it, you're going to run circles around 95% of fucking businesses nowadays because they're not doing anything right. They're and not- that goes back to her question as to how do we grow or how do we compete? That's just it. We do our jobs and that word gets around and you do this for 40 years. Now you do now take me and put me in today's society. Holy shit, I'd have a hell of a time doing it. Because you don't have that background, you don't have that depth. You have to sit there and be on a soapbox like he is daily in order to get people to understand the differences. I don't have to do that anymore. You know, people come to us and they realize, "Hey, Okay, he's going to be gone for a week. And that's what, you know, for for jobs that only I deal with Mm -hmm. or customers that only want me, they'll wait. In the middle of summer, if they want a washing machine, they'll fit. They'll wait till the fucking hundreds are gone and I'm done with the air conditioners. Or they won't and I don't care. I don't, again, I don't have to catch every customer. I don't. I don't want every customer. There are customers out there that when they walk in or when they call, you go, you are going to be nothing but a pain in my ass. So go somebody. So go somewhere else. Yeah. So the good old days. It sounds like even word of mouth is something that you think was good because that's what's happening now. Oh, absolutely. Like the, the the length of time you've been in it is that's how you've built your business. Right, but that's how he's building his. Mm-hmm. Same way. Yeah, he's using a soapbox as well, but it becomes word of mouth. It becomes the referral business. His hair transplants were took off with 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 referrals. Yeah, he advertised, but the referrals are where it's at when they see the proof in the pudding. Yeah. So how much money are you spending on marketing right now monthly? I have no goddamn clue. <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess, and a terrible thing, number one. Hey, look, but at the same time, uh, it's not enough to where it's affecting your business in any way because most of your business has been driven the way it should be, which is word of mouth and referrals, where you don't have to spend marketing or worry about increasing your marketing every single month because you're getting enough business from doing a good fucking job and having word of mouth. I would say, point. I would say per year we probably spend fifty, sixty thousand the whole year. Yeah, fucking much. hell, pretty much. That's awesome. Yeah, but we don't so we make spend the, in, we don't also don't bring in the money that you do. True, but it's a scale thing. But at the same time, yeah, like guys, listen, guys, listen to thing. that. You could spend fifty thousand dollars a year on marketing and just do a good fucking job and get mm-hmm. referrals and build a seven figure business versus spending fifty thousand dollars a month on marketing and ripping through people and shitting on them and having a fucking and crappy to, service. Well, and the common thing now always is get new people. Well, not only that, but change your business name. Because once you burn a business name, they'll they'll roll in. There's lots of companies that do this job that will swap names. Really, every couple of years they become somebody else because they're just burning through people. Because they burn oh. through that, they burn through the the name of the the. And so pe- the, the public knows it's gotten out that okay, this guy's a ripoff artist, or he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Really, so they change the name and open up in a new name and start all over again, oh, burning wow. through that one. People, but now you you, and you go back ahead though that way. I mean, well, I I guess it works for them because they're they're seven figure figure businesses. Mm-hmm. But just no, there's no integrity, there's no honesty, and I'm not about that. But you bring up what's new, the internet. I hate it. It's a love affair mm-hmm. because I can look shit up while I'm at the house. I can do bids while I'm in my truck. I can bring in, you know, get quotes, get quotes sent out, send bids out, get jobs from my clients over the phone. You know, they'll email me their, their, their job. We get it done. Mm-hmm. We're on the job. We're looking, instead of calling in parts places to have them look it up, we're on the phone looking it up ourselves mm-hmm. and ordering the parts 
or my my vans are completely computerized, so we know what's on there. So I still know what's on there in my head. I haven't lost all my fucking marbles, but <laughs> if if I don't, then I can still refer back to the computer, punch it in, and see if the part's there. But that doesn't tell me what I have here. And what I have here is 40 years of knowing that, okay, this model or this part no longer available is the same one as this one from that's still available. Oh, yeah. And the computers won't cross that because mm-hmm. it's maybe, they may be two different brands, but they bought the same motor from the same manufacturer. So they're using the same evaporator motor in a refrigerator or the same mo- drive motor in a washing machine. Mm-hmm. But you look in a computer, won't tell you. Call Sears. Sears won't touch your machine unless you have a model serial number because they can't fix anything. The technicians don't touch them. Mm-hmm. They have to call their main office. Their main office looks up the machine, tells them what to look, what to troubleshoot for, then orders the parts and sends the next guy out. So it, you, there's no continuity. There's no customer. And you go back to what, to what the old way, still the new way, which is I service a lot of seniors. And whenever I have a new employee come on, I tell them, you spend time with them. I don't care that you're there to fix a washer. I don't care if there's nothing wrong with it because we get those. We have seniors call that make believe that shit's broken so that somebody comes to visit. Oh. And we go and I tell them, okay, well, if it's just a service call, then when you're writing up your bill, you sit at the kitchen table with them, have a crappy cup of coffee because none of those little bitches can make coffee. <laughs> you have drink your crappy cup of coffee and you visit. And then when you leave, you give them, especially the women, a big hug if they're open to it. If they shy away, obviously don't grab them and, and molest them. <laughs> but that's the only physical content. Most of them have dead spouses mm-hmm. because wives drive their husbands into the grave. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We definitely, die. We definitely die sooner. There's lots of women, not so many old men. But you give them a hug, you say, you know, and, I, and lots of them I tell, look, you don't have to call me to fix your washing machine when I know it's not broken. Just call me. I'm always in the area. We'll stop for a cup of coffee. No, 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 it's broken. Okay. You want to pay me to come visit, then we'll pay to come visit, but you spend yeah. the time. Yeah. And my nowadays they 90. don't do that. My grandmother's 90 and she does that. Yeah, she, but you know, there's always like something wrong at her house. Yeah, but you don't find yeah. repairmen yeah. that'll do that anymore. Yeah. They're all about, no, 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 fix it, get the hell out, fix it, get the hell out, get your check, or don't even get the check. We're going to bill them over the internet. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I still use paper invoices. Holy shit. Wow. We enter them in the computer. Uh huh. But I still, still use paper. Checks. Still take checks. Written checks. Hell yeah. Give mm-hmm. them a discount for money, for, for cash and checks. Mm-hmm. Plastic at charge. Yeah. It costs to do that. Wow. Well, they just passed a law, I think, or it's coming up that uh, you can't charge for credit, but you can discount cash. Yeah. Okay. It's called cash incentives. So it's dual price. It's actually yeah. called dual yeah. pricing. You can't say it's a discount. So it's called dual pricing. We do it at Genesis too. Mm-hmm. We actually yeah, just but started you, doing but it. But you can't Saved say, hey, it's this much thousand. cash. 4% more for a credit card. It's, this is the credit card charge. Yep. We give a discount for cash. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dual pricing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is stupid. I mean, it's the same goddamn thing, but yeah. you have to present it the way they want you Political. to present it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Again, politically correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm so politically correct. You yes. are. I, know, I was I can gonna, tell. I would say, like, if we yeah. looked that Absolutely. up in the dictionary, I feel like your face would be that. I, like mother freaking Teresa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both of us would be, it would be like, it would morph. The picture would just morph back and forth. Holograms. Well, she was an ugly woman anyway, Mother for Teresa. Sake. <laughs> I think she had more facial Dad. hair than I did. Mother Teresa. <laughs> well, oh, now that shit. we've bashed Mother Teresa, what else? Yeah. Yeah, we what else, who else can we fucking piss off at, at this thing? Okay, uh, so I want to go back, back to the beginning. When um, your service time comes up, you're finishing your service in the in the Air Force. Um, see, I told you, you're like, mm-hmm. I'm more comfortable sitting up. Mm-hmm. I, mean, it's not for, I gotta move not, back and forth. My back hurts. Not, I'm old. Not you for bastard. two fucking hours. <laughs> I, I'm like, I gotta sit back and sit. sit you know, he told me yesterday, he tells me last night, oh, I, I want to do a podcast with you. It'll only take a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're getting to the end of your service time. Yeah. And you're about to get out. Mm hmm. They try and renew it. You want to go full time with the business. At that point, no, I bought a house called? too. Oh, you did. Okay, just so as I was getting so out. Tell, because so I, tell me that story. 
Well, that we that whole all that was the whole starting thing. Starting the business and the store in the house and all that stuff. How well, that- we every dime we had that we could save, we saved, and we put money away, put money away, put money away. Okay, uh, on twelve thousand dollars plus whatever plus, you would make on the side, but yep. it's not. I mean, would you say it was thirty k a year, fifty k a year? I don't know, probably. I would say probably 30K, maybe okay. maybe 30K back but then. But you still lived well below your fucking means to save money. Oh, absolutely. That's what, people don't fucking get that nowadays. Mm-hmm. If we don't. couldn't afford it. But even, okay, when we, I'm going to jump ahead just real quick. Okay. So we bought the first house. Then we, we go to move to the second house. We're moving in. We, we own the second house. It's a, it's a much larger home. We sold the first one. And we want to put a pool in. And your mom's mom's your mom was, hey, let's borrow the money. And I said, if we can't afford it, then we're not. If we don't have the cash, we're not going to fucking do it. So even then, when yeah, we could have afforded the pool, we waited four years until we had the cash to put it in. And then what did I do? Took a loan on the house. I, I read, redid the mortgage because it was a better write-off. Mm-hmm. Took that money, took the cash, and rolled it into the business okay. that I would have put into the pool, rolled the pool into the house, and wrote it off that way. Smart. Yeah. That's super smart. And people people don't get that. They, Man, it is so frustrating. In, you know, Even employees or business partners, they start to get a little bit of money, and then they fucking blow it, or they, they're buying all this stupid shit. Or I don't they understand. Think, like the car. Like, so the McLaren, like, I just want to explain to people, the McLaren, I pay $2,000 a month. It was a necessity because my fucking car broke down, number one. Multiple times. Multiple times, <laughs> and I just could not, like, I needed a car to really get to work. That's what his Uber bill but was. But then I could, yeah, my <laughs> Uber bill was expensive. I was renting a car, actually, from a local mm-hmm. dealership so that I could actually, you know, drive from place to place. And that, again, my income was, the that car is less than, now one one hundredth of like my income a month so it's it's i mean people don't get that people don't get like you gotta live no they want to like well i I gotta get my i have to have my hair done i have to have my nails done i have to have nice shoes i have to have nice clothes oh i have to have netflix i have to have i need a streaming i need a phone but i don't need just a regular phone i need an iphone 15 yeah because my 14 no longer is good enough or my 13 we have one tv in this fucking house and i don't like we have one tv mom's got a 14 my employee has a 14 i got a 13 (laughs) how the fuck did that happen this is ancient (laughs) Uh, but at the same time, it, like people, business owners don't get that. People don't get that. Live below your means for as long as you possibly can. And there's a point where you just have enough money to to buy things. So thirty well, thousand thousand back, dollars a year. Let's go back to yeah, you're getting saving out money, of the, getting and out then of the, you buy a house. The military with that. back then. And look, I don't want to look like a fucking martyr because I'm not. But mm-hmm. there were nights that you ate, and your mom and I didn't. It was still military at the time. There were nights that you and your mom ate, and I didn't, and I just pushed away saying I was full. And that was it. But we didn't live off a credit card to buy extra groceries. And we, Jesus Christ, we bought groceries at the, at the base, which was cheaper than hell. Mm-hmm. But it was just a matter of, you know, what was important to us and for what was important to me. And what was important to me was to watch every penny that we could because I wanted you to have a backyard. I wanted you to have your own room. I wanted you to have those things. And then later your sister when she came. And so we, we were getting out of the military. Mom was pregnant. And we had to worry about that because we weren't going to be able to have it through military. You cost me $25, by the way. You pissed me off. <laughs> I, was, I fought the bill. I was like, what the fuck? It's $25. It's supposed to be covered. <laughs> Having a child, $25. <laughs> wow. Wow. In the military. <laughs> wow. Fucking, on 12 grand a year, that's pretty fucking expensive. Like, Fuck. <laughs> but we, so we saved every penny. And when, and like I said, nobody knew that I was working. Nobody knew that I was. And back then, more of it was, yeah, I would do some service calls on the side for myself. But a lot of the time was spent repairing appliances for used places. 
Mm. And the reason that worked out really well is because I could leave directly from the base, take my greens off because you couldn't be in public with with the greens. So my my fatigues, mm-hmm. I take my and back then they weren't they weren't camouflaged; they were just green. So I take my greens off. I put on regular street clothes. Bring bring them with me. We didn't have cell phones, so we couldn't call. But I would call the house. We had a we had our our uh, what is it answering machine, and if there was a recall, my boss knew that I had to leave. So I would call every hour, make sure if the, if there was a recall. That was when they would call us back on base. There so are no like, cell phones. So you got to call the base. No, there are no. They don't have cell phones oh, back then. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you like, they, but you wouldn't tell the base where you were. No, you're, the you're base would call back. my home. Okay. I would call my house. Listen to the messages. Oh, okay. Make sure that there wasn't a recall. Got it. As soon as there was a recall, I'd throw my greens back on, and then I'd rush back to base and usually beat everybody else anyway. Got it. But because they were usually drunk, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but and that was it. You, we weren't supposed to be drinking because you were supposed to be military ready, right? Uh, to be deployed at a moment's notice. So, but we'd go back and uh, and back and forth. So the money that we saved, we we were getting out, and they're in the military. One of the things that they'll do is they try to tell you, they try to brainwash you, and they tell you that you can't make it without them. And I used to tell them, I made it before you, I'll make it after you. I'll make it, I made it during and I'll make it after you. Nobody defines what I can and can't do. Um, so, and that's a lot, of, a lot of businesses today is they try to brainwash their people into thinking that they can't make it or they can, this is where you belong. You don't need to go any further. You can't go any further. This is just do your job and be happy. And, and for some, that's not enough. For some, it is. A lot of people are sheeple. Yeah. So that makes it, you know, if they're happy doing that and they don't want to move on, great. So they, some of those make great employees and they'll be employees for the rest of their lives. Which is fine because even Amazon needs box backers. That's it. Just they don't, needs. not necessarily box backers. There are a lot of employees that make really good money. That oh, do, absolutely. Entrepreneurs that do, and stuff. do what they want to do, but they just don't want that. They want to go home at the end of the night. Yeah. And honestly, if it's that kind of employee, they're still worried about their fucking job. Yeah. So they're entrepreneurs without fucking knowing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, they know they're not going to lose their house because somebody's going to come and take it because you fucked up. Yeah. Well, it's a special type of person who wants to wake up and get kicked in the dick every day to build a business. Ain't that the goddamn truth? <laughs> That's oh, but but you're so rich because you own your own business, and oh my god, you show up at a house and it's ninety dollars. Oh, I wish I had that job. Motherfucker, you want to see the bills it took me to get here? Yeah. yeah. I'm going broke at $90. Yeah, absolutely. It cost me easily double Calif- that to get my ass here. I live in California and pay $5 <laughs> a I gallon have in gas. I 14 fucking licenses to do the same fucking job in the same fucking area. Yeah. Let alone all the other areas. Mm. Yeah, that's fucking insane. So, so we're back you buy to, a house. Yes. Go back. So I'm getting out, and as I'm out the door, they all, you know, a lot of my my supervisors and, and people that I work with say what I'm doing. I said, I'm going to stay in the area. Oh, where are you going to live? I said, I bought a house. You what? I bought a house. And these are guys that have been in for 20 years. They don't have a house. They're living in base housing or they're living wherever they could, uh, renting an apartment. How'd you buy a house? I said, I've been working all this time when you guys have been drinking beer, watching TV. I saved every goddamn penny. We bought a house. And we bought it then because I had an employment history. And that's all they cared about. Mm. They didn't give a shit what I made really back then. Mm. As long as you can pay the... Our mortgage was $740 yeah. a month. Yeah. And we got in bed. I'll never forget. We got in our full-size bed that your mom and I slept in forever. <laughs> and she goes, can we afford this? And I said, well, it's a little fucking late now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and your room was down the hall. We had an extra room because Gianna was coming. And it was a tiny little 1,400 square foot house, but it was fucking ours. Mm. Or 1,500 square foot house. That's actually a decent size. But yeah. it was ours. And that was that. Yeah. That's awesome.